I have two very short questions. I will indulge okay. you. Now, the first question is going to come from the only person that's a member of the United States Senate who has a spouse that's won a Pulitzer Prize, Sherrod Brown from Ohio. <laughs> Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your visit to um, Lorain County, Ohio. Um, week and a half ago, first presidential visit to that county of 300,000 and uh, since Harry Truman in 1948. It was and, a great visit. We had a great time. And you, it was terrific. Um, ten miles from there at Oberlin College, uh, one of the great uh, private institutions of higher learning in this country. At Oberlin College, there was a building built there seven or eight years ago, fully powered by solar panels. It's the only, it's the largest building, it was the largest building in any college campus in America like that. Uh, those solar panels were bought in Germany and Japan, not surprisingly. Germany, a country that has both an energy policy and a manufacturing policy. Uh, it's 75 miles west of there is Toledo, Ohio, where you've been several times, and Toledo um, has more solar energy manufacturing, solar manufacturing jobs than any city in America. Uh, the, it, it begs the question of, of two things uh, in terms of manufacturing, of manufacturing policy and energy policy. We have all kinds of things in so many of our states, uh, manufacturing wind turbine components and solar panel components, and, and it, but we're the only major industrial country in the world without a manufacturing policy. And uh, every rich country in the world has one. We don't. I know what you're doing with Ron Bloom and the White House and other things, but how do we get there? How do, how do we, when we read these articles in the paper that, that China is, is just exploding in terms of, of wind turbine manufacturing and solar panel manufacturing, how do we rebuild our manufacturing sector with a manufacturing policy combined with an, an energy policy that gets us there? Uh, I hope people People had a chance to read that article uh, that was in the New York Times, uh, I guess, last Sunday, talking about how China is not waiting, it is moving. And already the, the anticipation is, is that they will lap us when it comes to clean energy. Now, they're not a democracy, and so they don't debate. Uh, and, 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 uh, and there are no filibuster rules. <laughs> Uh, and, and so, obviously, uh, over the long term, uh, a system that allows for robust debate and exchange of ideas is going to produce a better result. I believe that. But we have to understand that when it comes to some key issues like energy, uh, we are at risk of falling behind. We've already fallen behind, but it's not irrevocable because we still have the best research. We still have potentially the best technology. We've got the best universities, the best scientists, and as I said, we've got the most productive workers in the world. But we've got to bring all those things together in, into a coherent whole. Now, uh, I think there are a couple of elements to this. One, in terms of manufacturing generally, you just mentioned Ron Bloom, who we put in charge of uh, a a manufacturing task force uh, is just issuing now a report to me about the direction we need to go to have some coordination when it comes to manufacturing. Now this is not some big bureaucratic top-down industrial policy. It is figuring out how do we coordinate businesses, universities, government to start looking at where are our strategic opportunities and then making those investments, filling holes that exist so that we can be competitive with what China's doing or what Germany's doing or what Spain's doing. Uh, and my hope is, is that during the course of the, this year, we're going to be able to work with all 50 senators, because all of you have a stake in this, to just see where are our manufacturing opportunities and where can we fill some, plug some holes uh, in order to make sure that we're competitive internationally. Specifically on clean energy. We know that's an opportunity. I continue to believe, uh, and I'm not alone in this, that the country that figures out most rapidly new forms of energy and, and can commercialize new ideas is going to lead the 21st century economy. I think that is our growth model. Final question. But, but, but hold on, sorry. Just, just one last thing I want to say about this. In order for us to maximize it, 
part of it is the good work that Jeff's been doing in terms of just finding the right incentives. We've got to be open-minded about a whole range of technologies. We've got to look at clean coal technology. We've got to look at uh, nuclear technology. We're going to be making some significant announcements this year. This is an example, Blanche, of where you know, we can't be stuck in the past in terms of how we see these things. Um, we're not going to be able to ramp up uh, solar and wind to suddenly replace every other energy source anytime soon. Uh, and the economy still needs to grow. So we've got to look at how to make existing technologies and options better. But, and this is just the, the point that I want to make because it came up in New Hampshire yesterday, we still, one of the best ways to, to be on the forefront on the, uh, in energy is to incentivize clean energy and discourage the old sources or methods that aren't going to work in the future. And, and so the fact that Joe Lieberman is working with Lindsey Graham, John Kerry has been all over this. The three of them are coming together to try to find a workable bipartisan structure so that we are incentivizing and rewarding the future and understanding that there's a transition so that we've got to make sure that the dis disruptions are minimized as we move into this new energy future. That's going to be vital. So don't, don't give up on that. I, I don't want us to, to just say the easy way out is for us to just give a bunch of tax credits to clean energy companies. The market works best when it responds to price. And if, if they start seeing that, you know what, dirty energy is a little pricier, clean energy is a little cheaper, they will innovate and they will think uh, think things through in, in, in all kinds of innovative ways. So I want to congratulate specifically John Kerry, Joe Lieberman, uh, and Lindsey Graham, uh, who it, it probably doesn't help him for me to compliment him, uh, <laughs> but has, has been very thoughtful in terms of uh, how they're approaching this issue. So. Final question. Evan